Good evening and welcome to the Township Committee meeting of May the 24th of 2016. Ms. Borak, will you please call the roll? Committee Member Schett? Here. Committee Member McCauley? Here. Committee Member Thompson? Deputy Mayor Sirachi? Here. Mayor Delcor? Here. Please join me in a salute to the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised that in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, that notice of this meeting was made by the posting on the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and notifying the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on May the 24th of 2016. First on our agenda, we have approval of minutes. The first uh, set of minutes is the uh, May 10th, 2016 regular session meeting minutes. I have a motion to approve the minutes of the May 10th, 2016 regular session. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Committee Member Shett. Yes. Committee Member McCauley. Abstain. Wait a uh, Deputy Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Mayor Delfour. Yes. We'll move to uh, reports from committee liaisons. First up, uh, Committee Member Shett. Okay, the Hillsborough Economic Business Development Commission, also known as the EBDC, will host an evening networking event at The Landing here in Hillsborough on Wednesday, June 1st, starting at 6 p.m., going to about 8 p.m. It's an event where you can exchange business cards, build business connections, increase, increase your visibility, and develop relationships, relationships that will help grow your business. The event is, will be in the Farmhouse Banquet Room and the cost is $10. Online registration is required. There will be no payments accepted at the door and tickets are non-refundable. Please visit the HBA website to register, which is the Hillsborough Business Association website. So. Also, Saturday, June 11th is the third annual Flag, Flag Day Festival hosted by the Somerville Elks. The event offers free admission and will be held at the Somerset County Courthouse, Main Street, Somerville. Be sure to check out their website at flagdayfestival.org, which is flagdayfestival.org, for more details. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Camille McCauley. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. A few things for me tonight uh, regarding public safety from the police department. Um, just a reminder, there's going to be from May 23rd through June 5th, Police officers will be stepping up enforcement to crack down on motorists not wearing their seatbelts. It's a program called Click It, um, Click It or Ticket Mobilization Program, and it is sponsored by that program. And we have received a grant from New Jersey Department, a Division of Highway Traffic, uh, to support this campaign, and it incorporates a zero tolerance policy uh, enforcement of safety laws. New Jersey seatbelt laws require all passengers, regardless if they are sitting in the front or rear seat, to wear a properly adjusted seatbelt. And of course, if there's a child passenger, um, the appropriate restraint system should be utilized. So just be aware that we are going to be out there in full force, and uh, so please wear your seatbelts for safety. Also recently, the police department has put out a message that there's an IRS scam recently. Uh, we mentioned this before, but everyone is shaking their heads in the audience. They're all getting phone calls. Uh, I've heard it several times. The police department is aware of it. So if you get anybody calling from the IRS randomly about um, you owe back taxes or you have warrants for your arrest for back taxes, uh, if, if you have been, if you have returned the phone calls and you have been victimized or suffered any loss or you're afraid that you have responded, um, please call the police department. If you are not victimized and still want to report that, uh, you can do so online at Federal Trade Commission website, which is www.fb.com ftc.com, I'm sorry, .gov, ftc.gov, or by calling the 800 number, which is 800-366-4484. That's it for public safety tonight. Uh, we are having our Green Living and Wellness Fair this year. Uh, it's held on Saturday, June 4th. It's in conjunction with the YMC Hop that day. Usually that 5K race ends here at the Township Building, and there'll be vendors and things outside. Hopefully it's nice weather and not too hot. Um, I believe some of our council members are running in the race this year, so I'm told, but I'm not sure who's signed up yet. It may be possible. <laughs> uh, 
uh, participating in local businesses that will have informative present presentations, displays, and demonstrations to raise awareness for many facets of living a healthy lifestyle, including making nutritional choices and long-term life planning decisions. We usually have people here health screening, such as vision, blood, pressure, uh, blood pressure, skin care, and um, a blood drive will be here sponsored by Robert Wood Johnson, Somerset, as well. St. Hubert's will be present um, for those who uh, are animal lovers. They'll be collecting much needed supplies, such as pet food, collars and leashes, and there'll be a list of full, a full wish list um, on our website on Friday's E! News. So if you plan on coming and you want to bring something for St. Hubert's, I'm sure they would appreciate that. Finally, there's a poster contest that we do every year as well. We get some really cool posters, and it's really fun to have the kids be so artistic on green and sustainable living. And um, it's called a Living Green Theme Poster. Be sure to tell everybody that you know, and it's usually uh, school, high school kids or l below, any, any age group can really um, submit their poster, and then we have our wonderful administration staff who goes and chooses the winners. To register to participate in the YMCA K, uh, Hop K, um, please visit YMCA's website. And last, just a note, um, it is hurricane season. It does start in June. We all know that we've had a couple of hurricane issues here. We hopefully never see that again. But just in case, um, you know, in June is the time that they usually start uh, coming in. And we just wanted you to know how to be prepared by visiting ready.gov website at www.ready.gov slash hurricanes. There was a great website there, a lot of information to prepare you. Um, it's always good to be prepared. More information will be posted on the edition of the Friday e-newsletter this week as well. So please go to our Friday e-newsletter. If I keep mentioning that, it's because it's a very good informational um, source and uh, it's very easy to sign up and get information from the township. And that's it for me this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let the record reflect that uh, Committee McThompson has joined us. Welcome. And um, your perfect time. Uh, any comments? Yeah, a couple comments, uh, Mayor. Uh, again, apologize for being late this evening. Uh, first, uh, I wanted to let everyone know that Hillsborough Township last week was uh, honored with the, the 2016 Playful City USA designation for the first time. Hillsborough is one of only five municipalities in New Jersey and one of only 257 communities nationwide to earn this recognition. Celebrating its 10th anniversary, the National Recognition Program honors cities and towns across the country for making their cities more playable. This past year, the basketball courts at Ann Van Middleworth Park were resurfaced and a new dog park was opened uh, last year. In addition, we have future improvements to the parks uh, that are being planned along with other parks that will be hopefully opening uh, rel relatively soon as well. As always, we encourage and promote all of our parks for various recreational activities throughout the year. And speaking of recreation, just a reminder that registration is open for the 2016 summer recreation camps and for all <coughs> of the other summer recreation programs. All those details and registration information can be found on the recreation website. Also, I'm pleased to announce that Hillsborough Township has been recognized as the 2016 Healthier Somerset Workplace recipient. The township received a silver medal that was the result of a coordinated efforts between the Health Department and the Mayor's Wellness Committee, offering various training programs and health-related seminars for municipal employees, the township smoke-free parks, and limited smoking on the municipal grounds. Um, also, the library will be closed on May 30th, and for Saturday, May 28th, the library will have a delayed opening. It will open at 12:30. Moving on to Municipal Alliance, uh, the Hillsborough Municipal uh, Millstone Municipal Alliance would like to remind parents of the uh, Parents Who Host Lose the Most campaign. Thank you, Community Member Shad. The Drug Free Alliance provides informational cards, which can be found in the back of the room, which let people know the issues surrounding underage drinking. It is against the law to serve anyone under the age 21 alcohol, even in your home. Please feel free to pick up one of these cards on your way out. Okay. That is it for me this evening, Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sirachi. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of quick items. Uh, first up, who owns a dog or a cat? Okay. How many needs a rabies vaccination update? Uh, if you do, you're in luck. <clears throat> Bridgewater Township is offering a uh, uh, vaccination clinic for dogs and cats uh, on Saturday, May 28th. So after uh, you join us for the uh, Memorial Day parade and uh, ceremonies, you can uh, take a ride up to Bridgewater and get your cat or dog uh, vaccinated against rabies. And then from the clerk's office, uh, some of you may have heard uh, this year there's a presidential election going on. 
So believe it or not, it's finally going to be New Jersey's turn to get into the action. We have our primary election on June 7th. Um, so just please be sure to uh, look at your sample ballot for voting locations, because um, I know that uh, usually uh, causes some problems there. But um, And if you do have any questions, you can always call the clerk's office, because uh, they, they'll readily know where you need to vote. And polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. on that day. Now, unfortunately, if you have not registered to vote yet, you've missed the deadline, because I believe May 17th was a deadline. However, still plenty of time if you want to get involved with the general election come November. So, um, uh, so if you do need to, or do need to uh, register to vote for the general election, you can visit the uh, state's election website, which is njelections.org. Um, <clears throat> to get a, um, or also to the clerk's office to get an application. And that's all I have this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a couple of items tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank the Auten Road School uh, for inviting me to participate in their opening ceremony for their Colonial Day, which occurred last Friday. Uh, at our last meeting, we did a proclamation uh, naming, so that was the 20th, I believe, uh, May 20th as Colonial Day. Uh, so I was able to attend uh, the event that they had there, and it's really amazing. I mean, the teachers and the students both take it very, it's uh, for the fifth graders only, and uh, they take it very seriously. Uh, lots of uh, colonial garb uh, was, was, uh, was on display. Everyone had either a hat or a bonnet or, or something, and uh, they picked very wisely because I think Friday was the only day in the last month that uh, we haven't had any rain. So uh, they had a great day for the event. Uh, went all day long, and um, they had a, a, a fife and, and a drum uh, musical rendition early on, and they had all kinds of events and, uh, uh, and informational things for the kids. So it was a really nice event. Thanks to Houghton Road for uh, allowing me to participate and read that proclamation to the students on that day. Uh, Friday was a busy day because uh, in the evening, I got to participate in the uh, Girl Scouts annual award ceremony. So our local uh, Girl Scout organization has a, a award ceremony once a year where they um, acknowledge all of the bronze, silver, and gold award recipients from, uh, from all their local troops, as well as uh, acknowledging some of the uh, volunteers that uh, support the organization. I believe there were over 50 uh, young ladies that received some type of bronze, silver, or gold award, and there were four um, for Girl Scouts that received their Gold Award, which is the highest designation uh, a Girl Scout can receive. So uh, it was a great night. I think they had 300 or so people in total at the award ceremony. So really a, a great turnout and they support, uh, the support for the Girl Scouts here in town is really uh, quite extraordinary and it's a tremendous organization. Um, just a reminder that all Hillsborough veterans are invited to participate uh, this coming Saturday in our salute, 11th annual Salute to the Veterans Breakfast and also to lead Hillsborough's uh, Memorial Day Parade and Commemoration Program. Again, that's this Saturday, May the 28th. Registration is required for the breakfast and can be completed online at the Township's Parks and Recreation website or by calling our Parks and Recreation Department at 908-369-4832. Uh, the Salute to Veterans Breakfast begins at 7.30 a.m., followed by our Memorial Day Parade, which will begin around 10.30 a.m. at the intersection of Auten and Triangle Road. And um, the parade will continue down New Amwell uh, onto Beekman and then into the municipal complex here, uh, where we will then have our Garden of Honor ceremony uh, around 11.15, and um, that will conclude the, uh, the events for the day. Um, the Breakfast will be held rain or shine on Saturday. Uh, however, if uh, we do get rain on Saturday, the rain date for the parade and the Garden of Honor ceremony will be Sunday, May the 29th uh, at the same times. Also, last week, our, this municipal building here uh, celebrated its 25th anniversary and um, we had a commemorative logo designed by a graphic uh, design student at the Maryland Institute of Art uh, in Baltimore. 
Uh, her name is Ashley Wu. Uh, Ms. Wu was unable to join us this evening, uh, but we do have her logo on display, both behind me and uh, you see on the, on the easel there off to the side. Uh, we did run a contest uh, regarding the, uh, uh, the logo, and that was our, our winning logo. So uh, congratulations to Ms. Wu for, uh, for her work on the design. Uh, to commemorate the, uh, the 25th anniversary, uh, at our break, after we go through some of the proclamations, uh, we will have some cake and light refreshments across the hall in the, uh, in the multi multi-purpose room. Uh, additionally, we'll have a video uh, that will run uh, from when the building was first opened in 1991. Um, and we have currently a clip uh, from the late assemblyman Peter Biondi, who was the mayor at the time when the building opened. So let's play that clip. Hi, I'm Eric Pete Biondi. Welcome to the tour of our new municipal complex. And I'd like to thank SeaTech for providing this tour. I'm sure you're going to be impressed with our facility, as well as learning something about the services that we provide for Hillsborough Township residents. I'd like to personally invite you to attend our dedication ceremony, It'll be May 19th, 2 to 4 p.m. Looking forward to meeting you then. So that's uh, just a preview. I know you're all in anticipation of wanting to see the rest of it, but that's uh, just a little taste. Uh, the rest will be on display across the hall uh, at any time. We'll also be playing it on TV 29 um, uh, at some point uh, and, and uh, in the building here. So uh, if you'd like to know, learn more about that, you can uh, check out the video. Of course, the building now is named after uh, Peter Biondi, uh, who was instrumental in, in uh, building, having the building built here. So. Uh, we look forward to uh, having you join us for cake uh, at the break in a, in a bit. And speaking of the uh, municipal building, at the last meeting we talked about um, a rain garden and some pathways that are being created here at the, at the municipal building. Uh, if you came in the front door, you've probably seen some of the construction that's going on out front um, and some of the trees that have been planted in the, in the main walkway there. Uh, we're certainly looking forward to that completion, which uh, will be later this week and be able to, uh, to fully unveil some of the work that's been done uh, on, that, on that rain garden, which was the result of a grant that we've received. Uh, and we thank Rutgers for their cooperation in providing a lot of the plants and the labor for uh, some of the work on the rain garden. So looking forward to uh, unveiling that and having that ready for our Memorial Day festivities this weekend. Um, and in addition, uh, just to save the date notice, uh, our annual uh, Independence Day celebration and uh, Family Fun Day, which we always like to call it the Family Fun Day, is going to be held on Saturday, June the 25th. Uh, more details will be released shortly, but that's obviously the day that we have our local town fireworks over at Auton Road School. We'll have vendors, uh, food, some, uh, some activities for the kids, uh, some uh, music on stage, so it's always a fun night. So uh, just hold the date, Saturday, June the 25th. And finally, um, as Committee McCauley noted earlier, June is the onset of hurricane month. Uh, later this week, uh, we will be receiving and, and uh, seeing finally uh, some heat, but maybe some extreme heat. So uh, if you want to make sure you're connected so that if there are any issues in town uh, with weather or uh, issues, uh, traffic, um, other emergencies. Uh, there are many ways that you can stay connected. Uh, we noted about the e-newsletter. Uh, we also have our Nixle and Honeywell instant alert system. Uh, those are available to sign up through the township website. If you want the website, there's a, there's a link for both Nixle and the Honeywell alert. Uh, and uh, we also are out on Twitter and uh, we have a YouTube channel. And of course, TV29 runs a number of our meetings on a, on a loop as well as some other uh, videos that we have here in town. So if you want to stay connected, please, uh, there's some information in the back, but there's lots of ways to uh, make sure that you know all that's going on in town. We're now going to move on to our proclamations this evening. Uh, we do have a number of, re of recipients. Uh, we ask that after you receive your recognition, if you could please resume your seat until everyone has received their proclamations. Uh, we will then take a brief pause, uh, head across the hall. Uh, for cake, but I'll also allow if you would like to depart at that time. So please just return to your seats afterwards and we'll give everybody a chance to uh, depart when we take the break. 
All right, first up, uh, I'd like to call up uh, Jordan Kang, who is a semifinalist for the Lewis Bay Scholarship. Jordan, come on down and join me. A certificate of participation presented to Jordan Kang, uh, state semifinalist. For your interest in civic contributions to the community as evidenced by your participation in the 22nd annual Lewis Bay Second Future Municipal Leader Sco uh, Scholarship Competition. It's uh, dated May the 5th, 2016, and it's presented by the New Jersey State League of Municipalities. Uh, I heard you had a tremendous essay that you submitted uh, and a semifinalist in the program, so congratulations. And here's your. I'd like to call up uh, anyone here. May is uh, Food Allergy Month, so we're going to have a presentation on um, food allergy prevention. And um, so, any parents that are here or or, or uh, young people that would like to come on up uh, as well, please please do so now. Hi, how you doing? Hi, nice to see you guys. All right. Whereas. Food allergies affect approximately 15 million Americans, including 6 million children. And whereas the prevalence of food allergies appears to be increasing among children under the age of 18, which is two students in every classroom. And whereas according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, between 1997 and 2011, the prevalence of food allergies rose about 50%. And whereas eight foods account for 90% of all food allergy reactions, and they are peanuts, tree nuts, milk, egg, wheat, soy, fish, and shellfish. And whereas a food allergy is an immune system response to a food that the body mistakenly believes is harmful, and when a person with a food allergy eats the food, his or her immune system releases massive amounts of chemicals, including histamine that trigger a cascade of symptoms that can affect the respiratory system, the gastrointestinal system, the, the skin, and the cardiovascular system. And whereas there is no cure for food allergies, strict avoidance is the only way to prevent and whereas anaphylaxis is a serious allergic reaction that comes on quickly and has the potential to become life-threatening. And whereas managing a food allergy on a daily basis involves constant vigilance and trace amounts of an allergen can trigger an allergic reaction in some individuals. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Township Committee of Hillsborough, declare May as Food Allergy Awareness Month and encourage all residents to be educated and aware of the signs, symptoms, and severity of food allergies. You guys want to hold this right here? Call up Angela Cleveland. Whereas Angela Cleveland, a counselor at Auton Road Intermediate School, 
has received the honor of Somerset County School Counselor of the Year. And whereas Ms. Cleveland has been a professional school counselor since 2001, and whereas Ms. Cleveland has served as Auden Road's anti-bullying specialist since 2011, and is passionate about creating a school culture where all children feel accepted, cared for, and appreciated for their unique qualities. And whereas Ms. Cleveland co-chairs Borough Safe, a committee composed of Hillsborough Township school staff and community members that work together to provide suicide awareness and prevention. And whereas Ms. Cleveland is a leader In the, in the counseling community, having presented at the National School, New Jersey School Counselor Association Annual Conference, and she will be presenting at an upcoming American School Counselor Association Conference this July. And whereas Ms. Cleveland has written and published two books titled, I'm No Scaredy Cat, But I'm Afraid to Go to School, and Peter's Special Concoction, How a Little Boy Learned to Manage Type 1 Diabetes. And whereas Ms. Cleveland champions the infusion of technology into both the counseling and teaching environment to expand learning and collegial sharing beyond the walls of the traditional classroom. Now therefore be it proclaimed that we the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee further commend Ms. Cleveland for being recognized for recognize the Somerset County School Counselor of the Year and we thank her for all her work and dedication to the youth of Hillsborough. Congratulations. <laughs> to a famous author you probably all have heard of. It's called Anonymous. <laughs> this quote um, goes something like, it's a beautiful thing when a career and a passion come together. And I truly feel that way in Hillsboro. Um, I was looking at the town motto here, and I just I wish that I could replace or add the word work to this motto, because I truly feel that way. It's, um, I just feel so blessed to be able to work with the township and the religious leaders, the staff members in our public schools and our students to create such a safe and positive school climate for our kids to grow and learn. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I, uh, Michael Bober. Whereas Michael Bober, a teacher at Hillsborough High School, has received the honor of Somerset County School Teacher of the Year for 2016. Whereas Mr. Bober has been a professional school teacher in the Hillsborough Township School District since 2004. And whereas Mr. Bober has served as a teacher for Hillsborough High School's video and film class, as well as other assorted art classes. And whereas Mr. Bober teaches a self-contained special education and adaptive art class, in which it, in addition to making art projects, the students produce large movie projects. The movies are directed, shot, and edited by his senior students doing independent studies. They hold a premiere for those movie projects each June, which the entire community is invited to attend. And whereas Mr. Bober also advises the peer mentors at Hillsborough High School, an organization of junior and senior students who serve as mentors for freshmen and lead them through various activities throughout the school year. And whereas Mr. Bober pioneers a safe classroom environment that encourages creativity in students on a daily basis, where he helps students unlock their potential and shines a light on the challenging yet exciting world of movie making. Now therefore be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, commend Michael Bober for being recognized as Somerset County's School Teacher of the Year and thank him for all his work and dedication to the youth of Hillsborough. Congratulations.
<laughs> I didn't realize we were going to speak. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I, this, is, this is really an honor. And I just have to second what Ms. Cleveland said, that, uh, th that Hillsborough really is a wonderful place to work. And uh, I just feel very lucky to come to work every day. I, uh, I tell um, parents on back to school night and I always tell my students that I'm just one of those people who's lucky to um, love coming to work every day. And so, thank you very much. It, it's really an honor. Brian Yaroszewski. We, we have a pretty special uh, group of uh, people that work in our Hillsborough School District. Uh, whereas Brian Yaroszewski, a guidance counselor at Hillsborough High School, has received the honor of Somerset County School Counselor of the Year for 2016. It was Mr. Yaroszewski has been a professional guidance counselor in the Hillsborough School District since 2005. And whereas Mr. Yaroszewski has served as Hillsborough High School's guidance counselor as well as teaching math for 14 years at the high school. And whereas Mr. Yaroszewski coordinated the PSAT testing for eight years, initiated the senior transition to college program at the high school, and is currently the AP exam test coordinator for students at the high school. And whereas Mr. Yaroszewski was an assistant baseball and basketball coach at the freshman and junior varsity levels for seven years, as well as the head varsity baseball coach for three years, and was named Somerset County Baseball Coach of the Year after his second season. And whereas he is a graduate of Bloomsburg University, where he earns a degree in secondary mathematics education with a minor in computer science. Whereas he earned a degree, a master's degree in counseling from the College of New Jersey, and earned supervisory cert certificates from Ryder University in 2007 and 2008. And whereas Mr. Yaroszewski is an incredibly active member of the Hillsborough High School, where he shows a real love and passion for working with the students of the high school, now therefore be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, commend Brian Yaroszewski for being recognized as Somerset County School Counselor of the Year and thank him for all his hard work and dedication to the students of Hillsborough. Congratulations. <laughs> I too didn't realize we were going to speak, but um, I've been in Hillsborough for 27 years as an educator and have enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I've seen it in a variety of different roles as a coach, as a counselor, as a teacher on different and various committees. Um, and I've enjoyed the community and have enjoyed the school district immensely and I am honored to, to have this and I greatly appreciate it. Finally, Anthony Heber. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about the Girl Scouts before, now we're going to talk about the Boy Scouts. Uh, whereas Anthony Heber, a junior at Hillsborough High School and a member of Boy Scout Troop 89, has recently earned the status of Eagle Scout. Yeah, you can clap, that's okay. <laughs> And whereas the Hillsborough Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough recognizes the many hours that Anthony devoted to attaining the status of Eagle Scout, working with diligence and making sacrifices in order to achieve this highly coveted position. And whereas Anthony has served the Boy Scouts in an exemplary manner and is deserving of the honor bestowed upon him. And whereas Anthony is a member of the National Honor Society as well as a president of the STEM Club at Hillsborough High School, Whereas Anthony's Eagle Scout project consisted of managing and constructing a 500-foot crushed stone pathway that follows the Stations of the Cross at Mary Mother of God Church in Hillsboro. And whereas Anthony successfully organized donations and coordinated volunteers from Troop 89, totaling 245 hours of work to complete this Eagle Scout project. And whereas Anthony serves as an example to the youth of Hillsboro Township through his high level of leadership and community service, and we are very proud that he's a member of our community. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to Anthony for having achieved the status of Eagle Scout, an honor for both him 
and for those who guided him with best wishes for a bright future. Congratulations. I'd just like to uh, thank everybody that has helped me get to this point, and um, it's been a long time, but I'm glad to have achieved this goal. Okay, as I promised, uh, we're gonna have a little cake across the hall now, we're gonna take a break. Uh, so anyone that would like to join us across the hall, please do so. You're also free to, uh, to leave if you have other, uh, other events or commitments this evening, but we'd like to thank all of the, uh, uh, the recipients tonight for all their excellent work and support of Hillsborough Township, and thank you for, uh, for what you do for our community. Uh, we're gonna take a brief pause and we'll uh, recommence in a little bit. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, again to all of our award recipients this evening and proclamation recipients. Uh, we're going to move on to the rest of our agenda. We have no new business this evening, so we're going to move on to public comment on new business or matters that are not on the agenda. Anyone that uh, has a comment on matters not on the agenda, please come forward now. Susan Gulliford, Hunt Club Road. Uh, I have a question on the Library Advisory Board. Mm -hmm. On February 9th, um, consideration number nine is where the transfer of funds was made from the Library Advisory Board to the Township. And in that consideration, it stated all funds collected by the Township pursuant to this resolution shall be dedicated in the municipal budget for retention and expenditures related to Hillsborough Library Branch. That it wouldn't just go into a general fund, it would continue to be used for the library. Mm -hmm. Now at the Somerset County Library System Commission meeting on March 2nd, see I do go to other towns, um, they passed a resolution agreeing to a request by the Hillsborough Township Committee, resolution 16-029. In paragraph five, it said, whereas the commission, the Somerset County Library Commission, may at any time and at its sole discretion abridge or suspend retention of fines monies at the local level. And this says this resolution was at the request of the Hillsborough Township Committee. Um, is this going to be, is this amended somehow? Is some action taken to prevent what they state here they can do at the county level? Mayor, if, if, if you want, I can address that. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, first of all, I, I think Maybe you're misunderstanding that. Um, first of all, the fine money that the county already gives to the local branches, right. that's something they do, and they can terminate that at any point in time okay. to, to every single municipality that they do it for. Uh, they've done that to try to give back to the local communities who host mm -hmm. the libraries. So they could, they could have any, any point in time done that. As a matter of fact, this township committee adopted um, a resolution to set up a dedication by rider, and we have Ms. Costa here tonight, and I would be happy to report that the state actually approved the dedication by rider. So if we're talking about the funds that the library currently holds and the transfer to the township, that would go in this dedication by rider account. And by statute, it could only be used for the Hillsborough Library branch. So what you're reading there is that would have to be future. What they're talking about the county is they're just covering themselves and saying, if we ever just decide to on our own, stop giving you guys fine monies, 
we okay. have the right to do that. Because and, that's, and that would be across the board for every post municipality, not okay. just us. Okay, because in paragraph two, they do refer back specifically to consideration number nine, which I'm sure mm -hmm. you're and, very familiar with this. And, and they would never be able to take the money that's already there. Okay. The county would never be able to take the money that's already there, because again, that's going into a dedication by rider that could only be used for the Hill, Hillsborough Library branch. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other comments on matters not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to public hearings. First is uh, Ordinance 2016-05, which is an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of deed of dedication and a conservation easement for buffer area from Pearson Properties LLC for the property identified on the tax map of the Township of Hillsborough uh, as Block 151.09, Lot 220. As mentioned, when this ordinance was introduced, it allows the township to, to accept a deed of dedication and a conservation easement as required conditions of the planning board approval. Local land and building law only allows the municipality to accept land or interest in land through the adoption of an ordinance. And this uh, ordinance has been reviewed and found acceptable by our township attorney. We have a motion to open the public hearing on ordinance 2016-05. Move to open. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any discussion from the dais? Any discussion from the floor? Okay, may I have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2016-05? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mayor Marchette? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Delcor? Yes. Ordinance 2016-06 is an ordinance of the Township of Hillsborough, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, to revise Chapter 143, Vehicles and, tra and Traffic, Article 12, Schedules, Section 46, uh, speed, and speed Limits of the Code of the Township of Hillsborough to change the speed limit on Dukes Parkway West from 40 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour. Pursuant to an engineering study conducted by Mazer Consulting, the recommendation is to reduce the speed limit from 40 miles per hour uh, down to 35. This ordinance effectuates uh, that change for public safety purposes. Uh, may I have a motion to open the public hearing on ordinance 2016-06. Move to open. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any discussion from the dais? From the floor. Okay, may I have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2016-06. Move to close and adopt. Second. Was that a second? Second, sorry, yeah. Okay. I didn't know if someone would. Uh, roll call, please. Okay. Committee Member Shutt? Yes. Committee Member McCauley? Yes. Committee Thompson? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Delcor? Yes. We'll move to the introduction of new ordinances. Uh, ordinance 2016-08 is an ordinance to exceed the 2016 municipal budget appropriations limit and to establish a cap bank. Further consideration of this ordinance and a public hearing will be held on June 28, 2016. Under state budget law, the unused portion of the appropriations cap, which is different than the tax levy cap, may be reserved to be available in the next two years. Each year since 2002, Hillsborough has been able to reserve some funds in the cap bank. The cap bank has no impact on taxes or the levy. <coughs> we have a motion to introduce this ordinance. So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor. Roll call, please. Committee Member Burchette? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Delcor? Yes. Uh, Ordinance 2016-09 is an ordinance appropriating certain monies held by the Township of Hillsborough, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, for the purchase of various capital improvements in the amount of $388,583 in and for the Township of Hillsborough. Further consideration of this ordinance and a public hearing will be held on June 28, 2016. This ordinance is for those necessary items as recommended in high priority by our Capital Planning Committee Capital purchases are based on what is available in the Capital Improvement Fund. May I have a motion to introduce this ordinance? So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? 
Uh, <clears throat> yes, Mayor, if I have a couple. Um, just wanted to state that maintaining a watchful eye over finances of the township has been the standard for this township committee. And as such, there will be no borrowing for the routine capital purchases here or improvements or the uh, repairs for 2016. Um, I know this is kind of our slogan here, but you know we do operate in a pay-as-you-go plan. Uh, ultimately, this does save taxpayer uh, money for by not incurring interest expenses in future years through bondings of these purchases. Any other comments from Adeus? Yes, Mayor. Um, the three hundred eighty-eight thousand five hundred eighty-three dollars capital plan is based on recommendations from the capital planning committee that I happen to be part of this year, and it also consists of twelve members of the public that work very hard on this, and. Um, this is just the highest ranked items, priority items, that make up this $388,000. So I'd like to thank them for all their hard work. Okay. Anything else from the dais? Mayor, I just want to add one more thing. Um, as a parent who frequents uh, the municipal park here, uh, Castle Park as it's, as it's known, knowing that we're putting uh, money into improving uh, that park and making changes to it I think is fantastic I know it's something that we've worked on for at least the last year we've talked about it and I'm glad it, uh, it's been brought to fruition so thank you to the Capital Committee for doing that and uh, to Ms. Costa for her effort in the administration because this is a it's a high priority for a ton of parents in town so this is great I know we're really looking forward to it so thank you for that okay anything else any comments from the floor Roll call, please. Mayor Burchett. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Mayor Misarachi. Yes. Mayor Delcor. Yes. Ordinance 2016-10 is an ordinance authorizing disbursement in the amount of 30% of the contract price from the Township of Hillsborough Open Space Trust Fund in an amount not to exceed $330,000 to assist the County of Somerset in the purchase of the property identified on the Township of Hillsborough tax map as Block 169, Lots 36.05, 36.04, 36.03, 36.07 for open space. Further consideration of this ordinance and a public hearing will be held on June 28, 2016. This ordinance authorizes the contribution from the Open Space Trust Fund for the county purchase of 63 acres to be added to the county open space register. Land preservation continues to be a top priority in Hillsboro, and this action is in line with that priority. Can I have a motion to introduce? So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Burchett. Yes. Mayor McCauley. Yes. Mayor Thompson. Yes. Mayor Sirachi. Yes. Mayor Delport. Yes. 2006-11 is an ordinance to amend an ordinance entitled Salary Range Ordinance, establishing salary ranges for, cas for classification set forth in said ordinance. Further consideration of this ordinance and a public hearing will be held on June 28, 2016. This ordinance sets the salary ranges necessary to accommodate salaries established over the next few years by the public employee contracts and for non-union employee positions. This ordinance does not provide actual salaries or any salary increases for individuals or positions. It only sets the various ranges uh, for certain positions. We have a motion to introduce this ordinance. So moved. Second. Any comments from the dais? From the floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Burchette? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Delport? Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to our municipal budget this evening. Um, each year, the preparation of the municipal budget creates a challenge of minimizing the impact on taxpayers while providing township departments with the funds necessary to deliver needed and expected services for our residents. Our CFO, Nancy Costa, will be making a presentation on the budget details in a few moments, after which I'll provide some additional comments. I will also call on our finance chair, Deputy Mayor Sirachi, for his comments. However, I'd first like to thank the full finance team led by Ms. Costa, along with Administrator Ferreira, our finance chair, and all the municipal department heads uh, for their hard work and diligence in the preparation of our 2016 municipal budget. 
Uh, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Costa to begin the, pre the budget presentation. After that, I will ask for comments from Andreas and uh, any further public comment. Ms. Costa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening to everyone. Welcome to the 2016 budget introduction, which is the 10th budget I have had the privilege of introducing to the Township of Hillsborough. The 2016 budget totals $28,941,970 <coughs> and will be funded from anticipated revenues of $10,375,742 and a tax levy of 18 million, 566, 228. There was a sharp increase in rateables for 2016, and this increase in rateable values helps to hold the municipal property tax flat for 2016 by providing more dollars over which the levy can be dispersed. Since the enactment of the 2010 2% tax levy cap, Hillsborough has been eligible to increase the tax levy above the 2% cap by using exceptions year after year for increases in pension and health insurance cost increases, as well as debt service and capital improvement budget increases. In 2010, the township by law could have increased the tax levy by 2% plus an additional $284,311. However, for the sixth consecutive year, the township is not passing these allowable exceptions on to the taxpayers. Additionally, since 2012, the tax levy increase has been kept below the 2000 cap, 2002% cap, with 2016 increasing by 1.962%, the same as 2015. As revenues rebound, state aid unfortunately remains flat. <coughs> Hillsborough has not seen an increase in state aid since 2010, which is a reduction from the 2007 level of over $1.3 million. In addition to the tax levy and state aid, revenues are generated for a number of sources, including fees and permits, construction fees, and special items of revenues, such as cell tower leases. Surplus is also used to fund the budget, and the $1.9 million in surplus used in this budget has been reduced to the same level as it was in the 2013 budget. There are key revenue increases. The upswing in new construction has increased revenues from UCC fees, and the interlocal shared service agreement with the Manville Court has also increased those revenues. Spending appropriations are down in 2016 for public safety salaries due to the attrition of the number of longtime senior police officers. The mild winter allowed for a reduction of $245,000 in our snow removal costs. Uncontrollable costs for insurance and pensions show increases, and the Capital Improvement Fund appropriation, which we use to fund future routine capital purchases, was increased for 2016. The breakdown of spending shows 29% of this budget for public safety, which is the police department and our court system, with 14% for public works and other departments. The net cost of all township insurance, that would be health insurance, liability, workers' comp, et cetera, is 16% of this budget. There is no change in the municipal portion of the 2016 tax rate due to the increase in assessed valuation taxable. So the rate will remain at 33 cents per $100 of assessed value. For home valued at $350,000 in both 2015 and 2016, the municipal portion of those taxes will be $1,155. This concludes my budget presentation. The public hearing will be on June 28th at 7.30 p.m., and I thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Cox, for that presentation. Uh, we may have some questions for you, so maybe if you could just uh, stay close by. Uh, but before we begin and, and uh, take comments from the dais and the public, I'd just like to address a couple of things that you highlighted in that budget presentation. Uh, as I think we've come to experience, a municipal budget is never an easy task. 
um, but I do believe this budget is an overall continuation of the excellent fiscal stewardship that has been a priority for this township committee, uh, certainly during my tenure on here, and uh, I know many years before that. Uh, as noted by Ms. Casa, this budget has, has been our practice, uh, remains under the 2% levy cap. Another key point in our fiscal philosophy is to minimize tax impacts by keeping any tax increase at or below the state cap level. Once again, we stood our ground and said a resounding no to any exemptions uh, or loopholes to raise the taxes above that 2% cap, as we have uh, each year that I've been involved in the budget process. It's been the position of the Township Committee to take a fiscally responsible stand when dealing with the Township's finances. Therefore, once again, for the sixth consecutive year, as noted, we are introducing this budget below the 2% cap. In addition, cost savings have been a part of the municipal employees' annual goals and objectives. Their efforts are additionally realized in the results of this budget, and I'd like to thank them, uh, along with our, our staff um, and the Budget Committee, Administrator Ferreira, uh, our clerk, Ms. Borak, for all their work in putting the budget together. Uh, it's not an easy process. Uh, it requires quite a amount of diligence uh, and, uh, and a little creativity to make sure that we can see where we have the opportunity to save uh, and where we need to uh, consider additional spending, such as uh, adding more money to our capital ordinance. So I'd like to thank you for all that. And uh, Ms. Costa, thank you for your presentation and your work on this. And I'll open it up to the dais for comments. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'll just uh, kick it off, uh, if you don't mind, Mayor. Um, I want to again thank uh, Ms. Costa and Deputy Mayor Sirachi. Uh, it's my first time working on the budget directly, uh, being on the Finance Committee. Uh, and it was a lot different than my time as mayor, serving on the dais uh, in my other capacities. Very eye-opening to the amount of effort that goes into keeping us below the 2% cap. It, it is certainly not easy, even with um, some higher revenues in some additional areas because of uh, building mainly from one property going on in one project going on in town um, the, the, the entire committee was very cognizant of that or the finance committee was cognizant of that that we didn't make any long-term projections with that money we know this is something that won't be there year after year and we plan for that accordingly um, I'm, again as I mentioned before about the the money going into the capital uh, that was something that is very important to me and I know a number of residents so I was very happy we were to put additional money in there um, so again, I just want to thank everyone for working so hard, keeping the tax rate where it is. Um, I know people desperately are looking for that, that relief, and I think we're doing a great job in providing it. So again, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Sirachi, uh, for helping me out on my first budget on the Finance Committee, and then Ms. Costa and the entire team here at the Township. I think everyone did a really great job. Thank you. Anything else from this? Nancy, just a reminder to the uh, to people at home and so on, the, the municipal budget, their municipal tax is how much of your of our total tax bill that we receive. Um, it's about. Thank you. It's usually about 12% of the total tax bill. The school board being the largest at about 64%. So 64% is the. School board. School, absolutely. We're about 12% of the total tax. And the rest bill. would be county and open space. County and open space. Mm -hmm. And fire. And fire. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, just a few comments for myself. I mean, I started on the Finance Committee prior to um, several years, and uh, I know how much work goes into it. And I just want to say that we're proud of our employees, um, our department heads, who consistently try to keep our expectations where, they, where we would like them to be. It's never easy as a growing township here. I just wanted to state that we're very lucky to have rateables that keep coming into Hillsboro um, and the success of the township committee for keeping below the 2% cap. I'm out there a lot. I talk with other towns, and it's a struggle, and it's never easy. And uh, the public might not ever see the pieces that we put together in totality, but you can certainly see it with the, um, the final budget this year and in uh, other years that we've had. So I just wanted to say thank you to everyone here obviously the department heads and town, town council for making decisions like um, shared services and things like that that do save our taxpayers dollars that's our goal and that's why we're elected to do what we do and I'm very proud and I uh, wanted to say that I'm very happy to see the budget this year 
is yet again staying under the 2% cap. So thank you to Ms. Costa and her team as well. Anything else from Medeus? Sure. <clears throat> I need to have a final say. <clears throat> so just first, I want to thank again Ms. Costa, Administrator Ferreira, and uh, you know, and uh, obviously Commissioner Thompson. So now I think I've worked with everybody on this day. It's on the budget. Don't know why no one wants to stay with me on the budget, but <laughs> no. But yeah, as it's already been commented here, I mean, it's very challenging. I also do want to recognize too the hard work of our department heads. Um, you know, for you know, working with us on that philosophy of you know treating the levy cap as a hard cap and maintaining it below two percent. Um, I think as was stated earlier, I mean, if um, or in the presentation, if the township were to take advantage of the allowable exceptions and to basically blow through this cap, taxpayers would have incurred an additional uh, 284000 plus dollars in taxes. That's just year alone. Multiply that over the six years and you could see, you know, that we're already well past a million dollars in savings, um, you know, since we've implemented that, um, uh, that that policy and, um, and, and yeah and again you know the mayor did previously state it again this was the sixth consecutive year that the budget came below the two percent tax cap you know cap levy and while receiving um, no additional state aid and what I mean the state aid is because <clears throat> even though you see some money's coming from the state yeah that that's um, what's called the uh, gross receipts and franchise tax uh, revenues that the state turns back to us that the utilities pay sort of it's a payment in lieu of taxes basically envision the power lines where they cut through the township they you know instead of paying property taxes on that they pay this tax and while it is disappointing to see that line stay flat because I don't know about you but I don't think my utility rates have gone down or or the taxes but uh, I know the legislature is trying to work on rectifying um, I, I believe that oversight that you know th those revenues should be increasing um, and I guess, you know, getting back with the rateables increasing, um, again, probably the most glaring example of that is, um, you know, the new project everyone sees on 206. I believe it's already been mentioned up here, uh, which, again, was a, you know, a result of affordable housing mandates. But again, that, uh, um, that's the reality. Um, but as far as for the existing homeowners, and this was one thing I think Ms. Costa even tried to show that up there, you know, about our tax rate not increasing. So essentially what that means to current homeowners is that if you had no change in your assessed value of that property, you're not going to see an increase in taxes of the municipal portion of your tax bill. So, uh, so effectively, uh, you know, it's a, it's a no increase for existing homeowners. So, um, so I think that that's a very important note. Um, on that and again the capital funds I mean you know we've put some more monies into that you know that's always been an area to struggle because it's very important to maintain uh, our existing infrastructure like the castle playground um, and, and even purchasing equipment that is used to help us maintain that infrastructure um, you know it does go a long way so uh, you know when we do see those um, availability of funds that we are going after those you know one-time expenses uh, to help again to maintain the township's infrastructure so again I just want to thank everybody I mean this is definitely a budget to be very proud of um, and hopefully uh, we will hit lucky seven next year thank you mayor thank you okay any comments from the floor okay uh, so the resolution authorizing the 2016 municipal budget to be read by title only may I have a motion so moved second any comments from the dais you want more <laughs> I think we're good with comments <laughs> any comments from the floor seeing none roll call please Commissioner Burchette yes Commissioner McCauley yes Commissioner Thompson yes Commissioner Sarachi yes Mayor Del Forest yes uh, the next resolution is the resolution authorizing the introduction of the 2016 municipal budget and setting the public hearing for June the 28th, 2016. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? From the floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Member Shett? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Delcourt? Yes. 
We'll now move to considerations. Consideration number one is a resolution of the Township of Hillsborough in the County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, also authorizing the issuance of and sale of a note not to exceed $1,532,710 principal amount for the refunding of the Township's construction note, which was issued on June 23, 2015, to the New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Trust Construction Financing Trust Loan Program and determining various matters relating thereto. Last year, the Township secured financing through the New Jersey EIT, uh, the Environmental Trust Fund, for the Winding Way, Euclid, and Spring Valley Sewer Project through notes. Permanent financing cannot be secured until the completion of the project, so the notes must be periodically reissued. This resolution authorizes the extension of this interim financing. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments from Adeus? From the floor. Seeing none, roll call, please. Commander Burchette? Yes. Commander McCauley? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Commander Misarachi? Yes. Mayor Delcourt? Yes. Consideration number two is a, resolu a resolution authorizing the hiring of St. Hubert's animal control officers to conduct a dog canvas at $20 per hour, not to exceed a total of $7,500. We are continuing with our dog canvas for the township. The animal control officers from St. Hubert's will be canvassing the township and issuing summons to those dog owners who do not have a proper license for their dogs. May I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. Any comments from Adeus? From the floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Burchette? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Ben Thompson? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Delcourt? Yes. Consider, uh, resolution number three. Uh, consideration number three is a resolution authorizing uh, the hiring of Don Spinelli as full-time senior transportation driver and Jessica Gonzalez as part-time administrative assistant in the Department of Social Services. There exist vacancies in the above-mentioned positions within the township. Ms. Spinelli and Ms. Gonzalez have been interviewed and recommended by the Director and Assistant Director of Social Services to fill these vacancies. We'd like to welcome them both to the township. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments from Adeus? Uh, so one quick one. I just wanted to say that um, um, I think Dawn was here this evening, but she had to cut out early, so we can't get her on camera tonight. Maybe we'll get her another day, but I wanted to say congratulations and welcome aboard. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Mayor Burchette? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor Misarachi? Yes. Mayor Delcor? Yes. Uh, so number four is a resolution authorizing the hiring of Frank Lucas as a full-time plumbing subcode official in the Township of Hillsborough Building Department, effective May the 25th, 2016, at a salary of $78,000, and authorizing John Fiedler, the construction official, to post for the position of full-time plumbing inspector uh, in the Township of Hillsborough Building Department. There exists a vacancy in the above-mentioned position within the Township. Mr. Lucas interviewed and was recommended by the construction official to fill the vacancy, and we'd like to welcome Mr. Lucas to our, his new position. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. <laughs> Comments from the dais? From the floor? Roll call, please. Commissioner Burchette? Yes. Commissioner McCauley? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Ratchie? Yes. Mayor Delcourt? Yes. And can, to continue the uh, human resources portion of our meeting, a resolution authorizing the hiring of Garrett Malmstone as mechanic one at a salary of $56,583, effective May the 25th, 2016. There exists a vacancy in the above mentioned position within the township. Mr. Malmstone has been interviewed and recommended by the director of public works to fill the vacancy. Welcome Mr. Malmstone to the township. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? You're welcome. From the floor? Roll call, please. Commander Member Shett? Yes. Commander McCauley? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Delcourt? Yes. Uh, we'll move on to our consent agenda. Can I have a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? So moved. Second. Comments from the dais? It's a short one. From the floor? Roll call, please. 
Mayor Merchette? Yes. Kimmy Mulcahy? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Delfort? Yes. And claims list 2016-10. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mayor okay. Brichette? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Mayor Delfort? Yes. Uh, this concludes our regular meeting this evening. We do have an executive session scheduled for tonight. Ms. Borak, will you please read the executive resolution? We're in Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231. The public laws in 1975 permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances. And whereas the Township Committee is of the opinion that such circumstances exist. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough in the County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, as follows. Number one. The public shall be excluded from discussion of the here and after specified subject matter. Number two, the general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows. A, personnel, Robert Woodward, Jr. B, litigation, affordable housing, Hillsborough Properties versus Township of Hillsborough, and C, attorney-client privilege. Number three, the Township Committee may take official action on those items discussed in the executive session upon the completion of the executive session. Number four, the minutes of those discussions shall be made available to the public as soon as the matters under discussion are no longer of a confidential or sensitive nature. Number five, this resolution shall take effect immediately. Thank you. May I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. Roll call. Commander Brichette? Yes. Commander McCauley? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. And Mayor Sirachi? Yes. And Mayor Delaware? Yes. Uh, thank you. That's uh, going to conclude our regular meeting. We're going to move into executive session. Good night and hope to see you all at the uh, Memorial Day commemoration this weekend. Good night.